So I remember hearing a story uh, from Frank Sinatra. Back in the day when he was a huge star, he said uh, he seen Don Rickles um, at a restaurant. And Don came up to him and said, hey, Frank, uh, I got this date tonight. I really want to impress her. Uh, when you see her come in, wait a few minutes. And then if you, if you could, man, it'd be awesome if you could just come over and say hello to us. So Frank's like, yeah, Don, no problem. So uh, Frank notices his date comes over and they're eating dinner and he waits a few minutes and he walks over and goes, hey, Don, how you doing, buddy? To which Don Rickles replied, Frank, please, I'm trying to eat. <laughs> What's so funny about this story is, uh, you know, Frank Sinatra was like such a huge star and, you know, Don Rickles was not. <laughs> you know, he, he played in some movies and some TV shows, but he was not on the same playing field as uh, Frank Sinatra. So I always find that story funny. And you know, that's how I feel when I wear my Navy gear. You know, my kids love to buy me Navy shirts and Navy hats and uh, you know, I'm proud to wear it. But when people say to me, hey, thank you for your service, I'm being sincere when I say, thank you for paying my salary for four years when I was in. I'm thankful for the privilege of serving in the greatest military for the greatest country that ever existed. That's, that's an undeniable fact. So to me, it was a privilege. To me, the military did more for me than I did for them. I mean, they took a juvenile delinquent and made me into a man. They taught me my need for God. <laughs> and uh, allowed me the opportunity to worship God as I saw it. So I'm thankful and I'll, I'll always wear my Navy gear to be proud. But today I'm gonna talk about three men who, you know, honestly, I don't feel worthy to be mentioned in the same conversation. You know, years ago when my son used to wrestle uh, we had in the summer we were doing some you know the, this coach was great he would have these kids wrestling year round you know so in the summer they were wrestling going to all kinds of tournaments and um a man named wade Shallis brought his kid there because he heard we had some pretty tough wrestlers and uh wade Shallis is like the michael jordan of wrestling one of the greatest olympians ever to wrestle i mean he's like equivalent to uh dan gables if you know who he is and I remember uh, one of the coaches, one of the young high school coaches was like, man, I don't even feel worthy to be on the same mat as this guy. <laughs> and uh, so I can relate. And, uh, but you know, we, our kids today hear so much garbage and so many lies and all they hear is bad things about America. America is a terrible country. America is a racist country. So I just want to share three quick stories about three heroes that embody the greatness of America. And I got this idea the other night, I was at uh, my grandson's birthday party and my son-in-law was telling one of my daughter-in-laws, uh, they were discussing the Murph workout. Everybody's doing, everybody in CrossFit's doing this Murph workout. They're trying to get me to do it. I got to think about it <laughs> before I hit commit. Cause it's a tough workout and, and it was designed, uh, by this Navy SEAL, Michael Murphy. And in honor of his service, everybody's doing this. You know, I think they're starting Memorial Day because uh, unfortunately he was killed in the line of duty. Now, all three of these men I'm gonna mention have three things in common. They all received the Medal of Honor and they all died serve in our country. So Michael Murphy in high school got the name Murph, but he also got the name the protector because he would protect people. Uh, there's stories his high school friends said there was a special needs kid that was getting picked on by bullies and Murph stuck up for him and protected him. They said another time there was a homeless man collecting cans and a bunch of teenagers were uh, pushing him around and making fun of him and Murph, the protector, protected this homeless man. And then once he got rid of the punks, he helped the man collect his cans that day. It's a good man. And um, 
So he was in the Navy SEALs and they sent out four SEALs to just do some reconnaissance, you know, looking at some terrorists that had, you know, combined forces with the Taliban. This was early on in the Afghanistan war. And um, a local seen him. They could have killed the local, but he was a civilian. And they chose to let him go, knowing he was going to go back and tell on him. And sure enough, he did. And they came under heavy, heavy fire. And these guys were behind the rocks getting shot at. But they couldn't call for backup. They couldn't call for help because the radio had no reception. So Murph, being the lieutenant, the leader, took it upon himself to climb up to a mountain, knowing he would be an open target. And as he's calling for help, he got shot in the back. Dropped the radio, fell down, picked up the radio, calmly gave his coordinates to the man on the other end. Put the radio down and returned fire. Got back with his men, encouraged his men. Unfortunately, they were just overwhelmed. Hundreds of Taliban and terrorists versus four Navy SEALs. Although they killed over 35 of those Taliban, these four guys, they ran out of ammunition and three of them died. The fourth one, they made a movie about. It's called Lone Survivor, starring Mark Wahlberg. I encourage you to watch it this Memorial Day. Uh, and Mark Luttrell goes on different podcasts and talks about this. And he says, even the movie is like so scary and so heartbreaking. He said, it's nothing compared to what really happened. If, if we put what really happened, you wouldn't even believe us. But Lieutenant, Lieutenant Michael Murphy died that day. And, you know, I, I joke, um, you know, one thing I noticed, I was never in combat. You know, 85, 89, it was, you know, Ronald Reagan, peace through strength. And we had peace, you know. Uh, so I was never in combat, but I did notice uh, my officers, they always put us first, you know, in the civilian world, you don't see that. I mean, besides the job I have right now, and I actually went to the job because I knew the manager from a previous job and I knew he was a good man and he did look after his men. So besides the job that I'm at right now, most jobs, I can't see any of my <laughs> leaders uh, taking a bullet for me. You know, in fact, uh, they probably put me as a shield to save them. <laughs> but, but our military men, our military men are men of honor and they need to be honored on a daily basis. But this weekend we're honoring those who died. This is Memorial Day weekend. We're remembering those who died. And there's no greater hero than another Navy SEAL, Michael Mansour in Iraq when they were on a rooftop and he had several of his teammates around and several Iraqi counterparts that you know were fighting for freedom as well they teamed up and a hand grenade came and they were all gonna die except Michael Mansour dove on the grenade and absorbed the blow and saved his teammates and his Iraqi friends these are the kind of heroes that we need to remember this Memorial Day. And every time that American flag goes up, we need to stand at attention and remember these people. Now, I'm prior Navy, so I keep talking Navy, but all the branches gave, you know, some gave, all gave some, some gave all. I mean, I had a guest on the show, uh, and I consider him a friend because I talked to him on the phone before and after. And and he loves to talk like me. And we talked like for an hour. And I felt like I've known him my whole life. And uh, it's a former Delta Force operator. Doctor, got a PhD. Dale Comstock. And he was part of the most elite force. I mean, Navy SEALs try out for Delta Force and don't make it. So he was part of the most elite fighting unit in the world. And his stuff he did is so secretive, he can't even tell us about it. But I've heard other people talk about some of the stuff they did. And basically, um, you know, these guys would watch evil terrorists go into homes every night 
and rape the little boys and kill anybody else who tried to stop them. These people were the epitome of evil. And these Delta Force guys, and, and there was Navy SEALs doing it too, but primarily in Iraq, it was Delta Force, Afghanistan, it was SEALs. But these Delta Force guys would swoop in every night and kill every one of them once they were tucked in bed. And we need warriors like that that aren't afraid. And they did it to save these little children. And they did two, three missions a night in Iraq. Two, three missions a night in Afghanistan, the SEALs did. And the SEALs took care of business in Afghanistan and got us uh, Osama bin Laden. But the Delta Force guys got that whole deck of cards that Bush was talking about. Those 52 terrorist leaders, including Saddam Hussein. So, you know, I want to give props to my Delta Force uh operators out there that are watching you guys are the bomb and you got my utmost respect um and also in the army the last hero i want to talk about um uh, is called the serving of god by the catholic church serving of god is the first step towards sainthood his name is father emo capone he was an army chaplain, a Catholic priest in Korea. And when the Chinese came into the battle, they brought so many troops. They overwhelmed, they overwhelmed our American troops in this battle. And guys were getting shot all over the place. And Father Capone, in the midst of the battle, with bullets flying everywhere, would go to each foxhole, help, help each guy, pray with them, bless them. And finally, they were overwhelmed and... Uh, Father Capone negotiated a peace settlement that they wouldn't massacre everybody. Instead, they took him into a prisoner of war camp. And in that prisoner of war camp, the guards were getting so aggravated with Father Capone because he was giving every man in that camp hope. He was praying with them, blessing with them, sharing food with them. When they wouldn't feed him, he would go, he would go and gather food and bring it to the men. When they were freezing, he would go and gather wood and start fires. He did everything to meet these men's needs physically and spiritually. And the guards got so aggravated that they stripped them naked and put them out in the cold, the freezing cold. And he still would pray for the men and inspire the men and give them hope and encouragement and motivate them to hang on, hang on, don't give up, don't quit. So finally, they got so fed up with this guy, they brought him to a death house. And all the soldiers were pleading and crying, please don't do this to our priest. Please don't do this to our chaplain. And the guards laughed. And right before, before they put him in this death house, Father Capone blessed these soldiers and said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And after he died, two years later, the men were released. And the men carried a four-foot cross, a crucifix, a crucifix in honor of Father Capone, a tribute to Father Capone. They even, they carved it out of wood and they even took wire, uh, like barbed wire, and used it for the crown of thorns on Jesus' head. And they said, this is a tribute to Father Capone because he gave us the faith and the hope to hang on for the two years. And now we can go home to our families because Father Capone gave his life for us. Father Capone was 35 years old when he died. I said there was three things these men had in common. The third thing is they were all Catholic men. They were all Catholic men who not only believed the words of Jesus, but lived the words of Jesus. There's no greater love than this, that a man lay down his life for a friend. God bless and stay Catholic.